it's me, Zezri. I'm back after a while and I finally got my braces removed. I was very busy this past week, so I apologize for the late upload. I'm glad you guys seem to like my last video about a TikTok girl and today I'm gonna be talking about climate change. You know, because my videos are very consistent. Look, I like to keep my audience on their toes. One day I might be watching Borat making DIY poppets and rapping about money. Another day I will discuss serious political issues and leave you with the feeling of existential dread because we might soon reach a point of climate apocalypse if we don't take action against it. This is my channel, I talk about whatever the hell I want. Anyways, disclaimer time. I know that I always advocate for freedom of speech and I always say, if you disagree with me, I'd like to hear your take on the matter. But today, I don't have patience for that. Because if you believe that climate change isn't real, that climate change is real but it's not caused by humans, or that climate change is caused by humans but it's not a big deal or an emergency, or any other dumb argument some of y'all might have that advocates against climate change action, I don't want to hear it. Just leave. Go to Ben Shapiro's channel. I'm sure he'd be happy for you to lick his toes. I'm sure everyone in charge of the fossil fuel industries or all the billionaires who invest into polluting the environment would really appreciate your opinion. But your opinion isn't appreciated here. I'm sorry, sometimes I just can't handle stupidity. It's not just about being right or wrong. It's about believing in science or believing in propaganda that keeps us from prospering as a society only to make the rich momentarily richer. So if you are one of those people who chooses to ignore science, you are not welcome here and any of the comments you will leave will just be ignored. Moving on, the reason why I've decided to make a video about climate change is because of the recent protests that have been trending all over the internet. I'm sure you may have heard of the 1000 scientists who risked their careers by protesting against climate change after the IPCC report was published stating that we have to take immediate action to cut down on emissions of greenhouse gases by the year 2025 or we will face unavoidable catastrophic climate effects. That is three years. We have three years to reverse the effects of climate change or the earth will suffer from a climate and ecological crisis. And because of this, scientists are protesting. You may have seen this video circling around on the internet of Peter Kalmus, a NASA climate scientist who chained himself to the JP Morgan Chase building in Los Angeles. Here is what he had to say. I'm here because scientists are not being listened to. I'm willing to take a risk for this gorgeous planet. For my sons. And we've been trying to warn you guys for so many decades that we're heading towards a fucking catastrophe. And we've been being ignored. The scientists of the world have been being ignored. And it's gotta stop. We're gonna lose everything. And we're not joking. We're not lying, we're not exaggerating. This is so bad, everyone, um, that we're willing to take this risk and more and more scientists and more and more people are gonna start joining us. This is for all of the kids of the world, all the young people, all of the future people. This is so much bigger than it is a quite heartbreaking thing to watch and I imagine how frustrating it is for scientists who constantly have to try and prove something to the ignorant people who refuse to acknowledge the facts and the people in power who are still choosing to support fossil fuel industries despite the fact that we are headed towards a catastrophe. And you can really hear the frustration in the voice of Kalmus. And I'm sure that that anger is common amongst most people in the world who are aware of the current issue our planet is facing. Especially if you are young. I myself am 15 years old and I know that a large amount of my viewers are also quite young. I know that many people are scared that they may not have the opportunity to achieve their dreams in the future. I know many people are reluctant to have children or make serious commitments because of the uncertainty and how our planet will look like in the near future. And the point of my video isn't to tell you that you shouldn't worry or that everything will be fine. And it's also not the type of video which tells you that humanity will face an apocalypse and it's all your fault because you're using plastic straw instead of a metal one. The point of this video is to have a raw and honest discussion about climate change. I just want to share my take on the issue at hand and hopefully encourage other kids to also think critically about climate change. I just feel like right now everyone in the media is constantly advocating for climate action and everyone is telling each other that people must act now or else everyone will die or whatever. So everyone is collectively agreeing that we must save the earth but no one is actually giving realistic solutions as to how we shall take on such a task. Like for the past few days I've been getting posts and TikToks recommended to me 
about how deleting emails and recycling will help us stop climate change. And while it is nice to promote sustainability, I am not against that whatsoever. I don't think people necessarily understand the complexity of the problem. If reducing greenhouse gas emissions were as easy as just pulling the plug on fossil fuel industries or just using a metallic straw, we would have dealt with the issue years ago. The truth is that the problem isn't just as simple as bad rich guys want money so they won't let us get rid of fossil fuels. There are many obstacles and actually understandable issues that are preventing us from making the changes necessary to prevent a climate catastrophe. But before I get into that, I must just give a, like a little lesson about what exactly climate change is to those who somehow still don't know. So what exactly is climate change? Global warming, greenhouse gases, and all those other words people keep shoving up your throat. Well, for many years, since the Industrial Revolution, we as a collective society have been burning fossil fuels in order to generate energy. With this energy, we have managed to prosper and develop by creating many forms of transport, powering our homes, inventing various gadgets, producing cheaper food, and many more. All of these achievements wouldn't have been possible without fossil fuels. But what are fossil fuels? Well, fossil fuels are simply just gas, oil, and coal, and we burn them in order to produce energy. The problem with burning them, however, is that they don't only supply us with the energy we need to be able to live our day-to-day -day lives, but they also release carbon dioxide into the environment. This is bad because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. This means that when the sun shines onto the earth, instead of reflecting most of the heat back to space, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases trap the sun's heat inside our atmosphere, coupled with the fact that humans have been also getting rid of millions of trees and jungles that help to regulate the amount of carbon dioxide in the environment. Over time, our earth has been getting warmer because the amount of greenhouse gas emissions has increased and is continuously increasing as we speak. This is causing global warming, which is bad because global warming causes climate change, which is bad because it is harmful to the earth. How is it harmful? Well, the biggest consequence of climate change would have to be the sea level rise, which we are already experiencing. This will flood our coast and the cities we build on them, which is most of the most populated cities. Hooray! Weather conditions will be more extreme, there will be severe droughts, droughts, floods, and natural disasters, and literally whole ecosystems and species will die out. There are many, many more things that could and will most likely happen, but I am not trying to terrorize you, so I'll just move on. Okay, so yeah guys, if you buy my reusable eco-friendly metal straw, you will totally save the earth. Remember that it is 100% your fault if the earth dies because you didn't buy my straw. So click the link in the description to buy the Zezri metal straw available for a limited time only. If you don't buy it, I hope you never sleep well again knowing that you are single-handedly destroying the earth. I'm just kidding. I'm sure that many of you have heard about the idea of your carbon footprint, that you must reduce it in order to save the planet, you must live more more sustainably by trying to save as much energy as possible and recycle as much as you possibly can. You must also switch to an electric car because your stinky car is polluting the environment. And without taking these steps, you only continue polluting the earth and you are part of the problem. Well, I actually kinda disagree with this. And it's not because I'm against people using less energy or living more sustainably. I'm all for that. I think everyone should try their best to reduce the amount of energy they're using and recycle when it's possible for them to. However, I do disagree with the way that climate change is so common made to seem like the average person is responsible for it. Like continuously preaching the idea that all of us are somehow at fault for the state of the earth and that if we don't spend money on sustainable things then we are basically dooming the earth. It just seems like a way of putting all the blame onto the public instead of actually holding the people in power accountable for the lack of action they are taking towards this global threat. Our whole industrial society has to change in order to make a difference. Taking one part out of the equation won't make a big difference when it comes to the bigger picture. This is because climate change is a systematic issue. Our industry, agriculture, and the way we live our lives were all built upon the burning of fossil fuels. And in order to prevent our impending doom, we have to be prepared for a systematic change. This means that the major global emitters will have to stop emitting. This means that politicians and governors will have to start taking action against climate change. And we as a collective society will have to be prepared to change the comfortable way of life we have gotten used to living. It's also kind of classist to assume that everyone is able to afford a sustainable way of living when we all know that the cheapest products are made by the burning of fossil fuels. Some people can't afford to think about the earth dying when their children are dying from starvation. So what can we actually do that will make a difference? Well, since we don't have
have that much power on our own, we need to make sure that those who are in power make the necessary actions against climate change. This means we should hold government officials and politicians accountable for their words and actions. Politicians will only take action against climate change because they feel like their position is threatened if they don't. That's why we should let those people know what we want and what will happen if they don't follow through with our demands. Those who live in democratic societies should vote out those who aren't willing to make a change and vote for those who are going to do something. This is also why people are protesting. People all over the world are trying to make it known that the public isn't happy with the way things are currently being handled. That's why these protests aren't just a waste of time. They actually do make a difference. And since we live in a majority capitalistic society, products will only be made if people keep demanding them. If people buy into unsustainably made clothing or gadgets, companies will continue making them, which will continue polluting the planet. But if companies find that stuff like that no longer has a demand, they will switch to producing more sustainable products. So you should live more sustainably, but not because you feel guilty or because you are being convinced into buying a product, but because by living more sustainably, you will do your tiny part in a systematic change. But of course, as I said in the beginning, there are many complex obstacles which lie in the way of us reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So here they are. The way we cultivate and source our food in of itself is an issue. I'm sure you've heard angry vegans preach their plant-based sustainable way of eating, but even what they eat isn't 100% sustainable. In fact, most of the food we eat is produced in an unsustainable way, and this is because we live in an era where it's almost impossible to have food made without causing some sort of harm to the environment. I mean, literally, rice cultivation produces about the same amount of emissions as air travel does. These issues are only going to start growing because our population is growing growing larger every year and there is literally no way to feed such a large population without producing a crap ton of emissions which will destroy our earth. The demand for meat is also becoming higher each year and the vegans, as angry as they are, are right about just how harmful animal products are to the environment. Animal products account for about 60% of food emissions even though we don't even eat meat as commonly as we eat plant-based foods. And since we crave meat so much, we are forced to use valuable land which could have been used for plants or trees in order to breed animals for consumption. And I'm sure you've heard of the cows farting issue, which is hilariously sad. Like we eat so many cow products that we have to breed increasingly large populations of them. And we breed so many of them that their farts are starting to pollute our environment. It's actually insane. So basically crazy vegans who are trying to strip you away of your favorite hamburgers are right. We will literally not be able to save our planet without going vegan. No, this doesn't mean that if everyone goes vegan, we will save our planet. Our planet will save still kind of be doomed even if all of us will go vegan because as I already said, removing only one piece of the issue will not solve the whole issue. We need to make a large systematic change. So basically, going vegan won't save the earth, but we can't save the earth without going vegan. I know, I know, I'm not happy about this either. I don't think that most people are. I'm not planning on going vegan anytime soon. I've literally never gone a day in my life without eating animal products. I eat some sort of animal protein for each meal. I don't consider it a meal without meat. It's just a side dish for me. You know, maybe maybe I should go vegan for a week. Maybe I should try. Comment and like if you would like to see me try. I'm also interested in making a video about veganism as a whole because I find it an interesting subject to talk about. So maybe you guys would like a video like that. But anyways, moving on. Another issue which prevents us from stopping climate change is poverty. See, for many years, the prosperity of a country was connected to the amount of carbon emissions it produced. The richer a country was, the more it produced emissions because more people could afford stuff like heating, transportation, fancy clothes, and many more products that are made by burning fossil fuels. So for a country to develop, the most efficient way of doing that is by burning fossil fuels. And that is certainly the case for most developing countries currently. These countries need to release carbon dioxide in order to develop, and it's pretty unfair to ask them to cut down on their emissions when lower economically developed countries can't even afford to feed a large amount of their population. The development of a country takes the number one priority of any country and the concern for the planet is only really considered by those who can afford to care. Of course, there is still some hope. There have been some cases of countries reducing their emissions and developing further so it is possible for countries to develop now without having to burn fossil fuels. But since fossil fuels are the most efficient source of energy as of now, most countries are kind of reliant on them. Like I'm from Kazakhstan 
Kazakhstan, which is a newly industrialized country. And I know that our economy largely relies on our gas and coal industry. I also know that our public transport system is greatly flawed and a large amount of our population is forced to use cars. Pretty much everyone has a car of their own because we simply just don't have an efficient public transport system. And electric cars aren't common at all. You see, it's easy to imagine a world where the solution to climate change is simple when you live in developed countries like the USA or countries in Europe. It's a lot easier to be more sustainable there. But I hate how the West just ignores the other parts of the world as if we aren't even a part of the issue too, as if we don't exist at all. That's why the issue is so complex. I know that many people are under the false impression that we don't have to worry because technology will just solve everything. Someone just needs to invent a thingamajig that will magically suck the carbon dioxide out of the air. Well that thingamajig already exists and it's called carbon capture. Look it up. Well if it already exists, why can't we just shove it up everyone's butts and suck out all of the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere? Well it's because it will cost a crap ton of money that no one is willing to offer. Countries are much more willing to invest in fossil fuels instead because by subsidizing fossil fuels we are able to keep the cost of everyday goods low which obviously has large economic impacts on many people this creates a cycle which is almost impossible to break the last obstacle that I want to discuss is hopelessness. I know I probably destroyed all of your hopes and dreams by listing these seemingly unsolvable issues, but they really aren't unsolvable. And there is actually hope. And if you don't believe in that, that is exactly the type of mindset which will prevent us from solving these issues. You see, everything is propaganda. In this world, either propagate or be propagated. And the right side of the political spectrum and fossil fuel industries just love to try and make people not do anything about climate change. They get off on it. And that's bad. You shouldn't be convinced by them. You should still do your part and not lose hope. Because you know, when climate change was first mentioned, they were all like, it's not real. It's fake. Then when more and more evidence became apparent, they were like, oh, it is real, but we have nothing to do with it. It's just nature, guys. Then when even more evidence came out, they were like, um, so like we are at fault, but it's not a big deal. Like we'll survive. Like we'll just build a wall around Florida. People like these are constantly trying to make people not do anything about climate change and their very last attempt at doing this is to try and convince you that you shouldn't do anything because you can't do anything about it. But they're wrong and don't fall for it. There's still hope. There's still time. We can still make a difference. We cannot make a change if we don't believe that change is possible. But Desri, didn't you just say all of these terrible issues and problems and how hard it is to overcome them? Yeah, I did. But I didn't mention just how much we managed to achieve already despite these issues as I said no one thought it would be possible for a country to develop without using fossil fuels but now we have found that it is actually possible because a few countries managed to do it this means that many more will be able to follow the same path countries that used to produce insane amounts of emissions like India and China are actually slowing down on their fossil fuel burning and since 2015 three fourths of plant coal plants have been cancelled and 44 countries have committed to stop building them the price of fossil fuels has also increased and the prices of renewable energy sources have actually decreased, making them more accessible. Technology like carbon capture, mentioned previously, has also become significantly cheaper. And more climate action is starting to take place more regularly, more people are educated on these issues, more laws are being made for climate action. And yes, all of these achievements might be happening too slow to reduce emissions in time, but it is a step in the right direction. And we've managed to achieve all of this despite the various obstacles. Just imagine how much we could achieve if we didn't have these things in the way. So so basically, don't lose hope, continue to support those who work to save our planet, continue to spread awareness, continue to live more sustainably, continue to vote for those who care about the environment. We can all do our parts. We can develop and prosper even further as a society without needing to burn fuels. Also one last thing to complain about before I go, I hate these stupid celebrities advocating for the planet when they literally invest in NFTs and have like 20 private jets. Little dicky stupid earth song was such a low point in our society. Half the celebrities in that song invested in cryptocurrency. They obviously just joined in on it to improve their reputation. Anyways, if you want to see me go vegan for a week, subscribe, like, and comment. I hope you enjoyed the video and more great content awaits you. Bye! Bye.